Today we're pulling back the cloak of mystery surrounding a Marvel supervillain who rules the underworld. We're going to open up the hood and see just who he is. Today is all about Parker Robbins, the Marvel Comics character known as The Hood. Thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. With that out of the way, let's jump right into our story. Created by Brian K. Vaughn and Kyle Holtz, the Marvel Comics supervillain known as The Hood first appeared in his own six-issue miniseries in 2002. This was part of a new imprint at Marvel called Marvel Max, which was a line of titles aimed at adults and included harder, edgier themes and more blood and violence. But anyway, back to The Hood. Parker was born to Arthur and Eliza Robbins in New York, New York. Arthur was close to his son during those early years, however, Arthur was a known associate of Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. During that time period, Parker and his father saw a confrontation between Electro and Daredevil, and that moment would stay with Parker for a long time. Even though his father worked for the Crime Lord, Parker had a normal day job and would travel on public transportation to and from, spending the time en route reading philosophical books from people like Nietzsche. But even though Parker chose to work a normal job, he wasn't immune to the harsh realities of his father's life. And that came to a crescendo when his father died. And when that happened, something broke in Parker's mother Eliza's mind, so she was admitted as an inpatient to Bridgeside Psychiatric Care Center. Parker was parentless now and struggled to make ends meet, but when he would visit his mother, he would lie to her and tell her everything was good, his job was treating him well, but when one of the center's staff questioned him about these lies, Parker pulled a knife on that orderly. Parker had a girlfriend named Sarah to take care of too, although he also had a prostitute on the side named Gro. Not long after, Parker was with his cousin, John King, at a bar where they were trying to figure out how to get money to get Parker's mom into a better facility, and they came up with a scheme to rob a shipment of valuables. Electra was at the bar partying, and Parker recognized him from when he and his dad saw Electra fighting with Daredevil. And then a Hydra agent, who was also at the bar, tried to recruit Parker and his cousin to Hydra, but instead of saying yes, they beat up the agent and stole his shoes. And you'll see that stealing shoes seems to be a theme in Parker's life. So that night, Parker and King broke into a warehouse, but instead of robbing it, they found the warehouse empty except for some candles and symbols on the floor, but were then ambushed by a demon in a cloak named Nasanti. Parker shot and seemingly killed Nasanti, and then stole the demon's boots and cloak, and, and the pair ran away. Unbeknownst to him at the time, that garb was empowered by the demon Dormammu. When Parker was trying to get rid of the gun in a dumpster, he was attacked by some muggers, so he ran away, putting on the stolen boots, and as he ran, he started levitating into the sky. So Parker ran around Brooklyn testing out his new boots, then went to John's apartment to show him his new skills, and at the apartment, Parker put on the cloak and he vanished. To test out the new items, John and Parker used them to spy on a women's locker room, and then came up with another plan to steal a shipment of diamonds earmarked for the black market. Parker went home where his girlfriend Sarah found a condom in his laundry, but he lied to her, saying his father had given it to him a long time ago as a good luck charm. Later that night, Parker put on his new boots and his new hood and went out to steal the diamonds. This villain named Gollum had hired Jack-o'-lantern, Shocker, Constrictor, and Madame Rapier to protect the shipment, so Parker and the four villains fought each other. And Parker managed to defeat them and escape with the diamonds, but that's when he ran into a couple of cops and ended up shooting the male officer in the neck and then bashing the female officer in the head. So John told his cousin Parker to run while he stayed behind to be arrested. And it was then that the police dubbed Parker Robbins as The Hood, and a reward went out for his arrest. When Parker was visiting Grove for his hour, he saw that John had been arrested, so he went down to the police station, but was then ambushed by two FBI agents and a couple guys using tech from AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics. One of the AIM guys ended up shooting The Hood with a sonic disruptor, which caused The Hood to go into a rage, and he attacked the agents out of control and chanting in an unknown language. The Hood's plan was then to pawn off the diamonds he had stole to raise enough money to hire a lawyer to get his cousin out of jail, which is when he again ran into the shocker. The Hood then attacked Gollum and Madame Rapier at Gollum's office, as it turned out that he was the owner of the stolen gems. Parker cut a deal with Gollum to return the diamonds for a cut of their profits, but after Parker left, Gollum ordered Madame Rapier to go out and kill The Hood. But The Hood knew he was being set up and double-crossed by Gollum, and he ended up meeting with Madame Rapier and the other three at Coney Island, but Parker had his own plan in place. Rapier took Hood's gun, but he'd only kept a couple bullets in there, so she quickly ran out of bullets, which is when Parker forced her to put on a cloak that he'd bought at a costume shop that looked like his own hood and left just as the FBI got there. They knew it wasn't truly him, but they just wanted to close out the case, which meant that John King was also released. That limited series ended with Parker bringing John back to his house with him to stay with him and Sarah for a while, and then he went to see his mom in the institution, promising things would get better from then on. The Hood's next adventure took him off-world. 
In 2006's Beyond miniseries, the stranger was posing as the Beyonder and had captured people, the Hood included, and transported them to his battle world. There, the Hood had a run-in with Kraven the Hunter, along with a space phantom posing as Spider-Man. The Hood also bonded with a character named Gravity during this story, and Hank Pym ended up shooting Hood with a ray gun. And at the end of that story, the stranger was revealed, and he sent everyone back to Earth, though Gravity sacrificed himself to hold Battleworld together long enough to get everyone to safety. And back on Earth, Parker and Sarah ended up going to Gravity's funeral. Shortly after this, the Hood was back in Brooklyn and trying to recruit other supervillains for his Hood army, gathering up his legion while the superheroes were engaged in their superhero civil war. And meeting at a Chinese restaurant, the Hood offered to pay a starting fee of $25,000 each if they would join his Hood army, and it took a tape that was recorded by Jigsaw of him beating up Tigra for them to decide to join the Hood army. One villain then informed his new boss that the Owl was planning to auction off a Deathlock replica. So the Hood assaulted the Owl's Deathlock auction by sending in Crimson Cowl, Madame Mask, the wizard and a doctor named Jonas Harrow. Later, when the Hood met up with its cousin at a bar to debrief on that attack, Wolverine overheard them and attacked, but Parker used his Hood to turn invisible and strike back at Wolverine. And he shot Wolverine and turned into a demon, and when he did that, he was able to take down Wolverine. Hood escaped and then plotted with Harrow, Wizard, Chemistry, and John King to rob a bank in New Jersey. And for that, they sent the Wrecking Crew in the Deathlock replica and ended up stealing over $12 million in the robbery. After that, the Hood army was watching the Mighty Avengers on TV when the New Avengers attacked. Doctor Strange cast a spell to make it look like many more people were attacking the Hood's lair and then used his Eye of Agamotto to expose the Hood's demon, but the Hood was able to escape, leaving his Hood army alone to fight. Then this villain from Hell's Kitchen named Turk Barrett, who'd been working with Mr. Fear, came to the Hood and ratted out Mr. Fear because he thought he was going too far with spreading his drugs and killing. So Hood sent Razor Fist and Wrecker to fight Mr. Fear's enforcers while also ordering Thunderbolt and Bulldozer to go wild on Hell's Kitchen. And then with help from Ox, one of the enforcers, Hood got to Mr. Fear. And Mr. Fear offered Hood control of Hell's Kitchen, but Hood declined and left her after he got word that Daredevil was on the way to take Mr. Fear down. And then Hood and his army went to Tigra and got the location of the New Avengers secret base, which was the Sanctum Sanctorum, and Hood was able to use his demon powers to reveal it, and inside ended up shooting Doctor Strange, fighting with Wong, and almost shooting Iron Fist as well before Tigra stopped him. Doctor Strange rallied and took down the Hood army with a spell, but the Hood himself again got away. When Madame Mask broke out, the Hood murdered a handful of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, but they turned out to be Skrulls, which were part of the Skrulls' secret invasion in 2008. Hood and Madame Mask interrogated a Skrull to learn what they were up to and used his demonic powers to expose Slug as a Skrull, and then he shot Skrull Slug. When the Hood wanted to see who was his demonic benefactor, this is when he learned that it was Dormammu. And in the secret invasion, the Hood and the Hood army ended up fighting the Skrulls right in Central Park in New York City, right along the Avengers and countless numbers of heroes and together they defeated the Skrulls and stopped the Secret Invasion. It was also in Secret Invasion that an evil counterpart to the Illuminati was created called the Cabal, whose members mirrored those of the Illuminati. For example, Hood was a reflection of Black Bolt. The group also included Doctor Doom, Norman Osborn, Loki, Emma Frost, and Namor. This was also at the time when Norman Osborn, now was Iron Patriot, and the head of Hammer, created his own Dark Avengers team, and unknown to this team was Osborn to work with the Cabal. So right after these were formed, Luke Cage's Mighty Avengers team planned to attack Osborn's Dark Avengers team, but before before that could happen, Osborn recruited the Hood to go after Cage's team. So he got together with his entire army for the attack, but the result was halted when Miss Marvel channeled Spider-Woman's powers to stun all the villains, and consequently his villain army began to question his leadership. Not long after this though, Norman Osborn went to the Hood and Madame Mask and promised a 1 billion euro reward for tracking down Iron Man for him, but they ended up failing. Osborn called the Hood in again, this time tasking him with taking out the Punisher. On this mission, the Hood resurrected Punisher's old friend Microchip and Frank's son as part of his plot to trap the Punisher. The Hood also hired a group of mercenaries called Black Stream to kill the Punisher, but Punisher killed them when he attacked the Hood's brothel in Bushwick, New York. The Hood used his demon powers to resurrect a ton of villains who'd once been murdered by either the Punisher or Scourge of the Underworld. And in the subsequent attack, Hijacker used a horror gas on the Punisher who then saw an image of demonic Hood before the Punisher was knocked down unconscious. The unconscious Punisher was then taken before the Hood who told Punisher he'd resurrect his wife and kids if he would kill GW Bridge for him. 
But instead of doing that, Punisher killed Cyclone, which initiated that resurrection process anyway. But Punisher had Firebrand destroy the bodies before they could be fully resurrected. The Punisher and the Hood fought, and Hood nearly killed him. But Punisher said Hood's family would be killed if he died, and that's when Hood revealed that Microchip's father was Jigsaw. Hood was at the Cabal meeting when Osborne told him about an Atlantean attack in Los Angeles, and when Namor and Norman started arguing, Hood took out his weapon just in case it got worse. And in Dark Reign the Cabal, Doctor Doom wanted to kill the rest of the Cabal, including Hood, but instead Doom stole Parker's Hood and kept it for himself. In Avengers The Initiative, Osborn was in control of the initiative and Osborn hired Hood as his COO. And as COO, Hood brought on people from his Hood army like Razor Fist, Scorcher, Griffin, and Living Laser to be his new team and hunt down SPBs who failed to register. One of his first efforts was to let his demon side go wild and consume a villain named Vampiro. Not long after, Hood met up with Baron Brimstone and Taskmaster to create a shadow initiative with the intention of invading the negative zone to storm this place called Prison 42. Dormammu ordered Parker to track down and kill Doctor Strange for him so that he could become Sorcerer Supreme. So a demonic Hood went and attacked Doctor Strange and he started hunting down all the candidates for Sorcerer Supreme and he teleported them to New Orleans, which is when the Hood had a confrontation with Damon Hellstrom. Then it was up to Doctor Strange and Brother Voodoo to force Dormammu to reveal himself. And they forced the demon out of this dimension, which left a lifeless, inert body of Parker Robbins behind. Spider-Man webbed Parker's body and he was taken into custody for medical treatment. And now seemingly lifeless, Jonas Harrow took over leadership of the Hood army. Loki then teleported Hood and Madame Mask to Cuba and offered the Norn Stones to Hood. Hood and Madame Mask teleported back to his lair and killed Jonas Harrow and then used the stones more after Osborne ordered him to keep tracking down unregistered people. And Hood used the stones to empower the Hood army and they went out to hunt down various Avengers. And in another miniseries called Deadpool Suicide Kings, Tombstone went to the Hood for help in defeating Deadpool, Daredevil, and Spider-Man by asking for help from his Hood army. And Hood ended up agreeing, but with some serious conditions. In Dark Reign the Hood, White Fang was after Hood now. White Fang followed Hood to a hit on Babu Marzuk, which is where Dormammu manifested himself in the dead bodies of the armed guards, and in doing so, ended up taunting the Hood. So Hood left, hooked up with Madame Mask, and then went home to Sarah and his kid, which is when White Fang attacked, and White Fang almost killed Hood, but Hood allowed Dormammu to take over his body, and when that happened, he almost killed White Fang before managing to regain control of his own body. Hood went back to his lair where his Hood army was hanging out, and then went to Satana to try to figure out how to control his demon. Satana told the Hood more about Dormammu and how the demon was using him, and so Hood vowed to stop wearing the Hood, instead using one from Crimson Cowl. And thinking he was free, he went home for a while, then to visit his mother, who it turns out was also being manipulated by Dormammu. The Hood army was starting to lose confidence in him, probably due to manipulation by controller. And to make it worse, Dormammu then decided to possess Hood's daughter Bree. Hood gathered up his troops to attack White Fang in force, which is when controller burned the demon cloak right in front of Parker. He then let Dormammu take over his body again, and he created a burning cloak, defeated controller, and made White Fang stand down. And at the end, Satana told him that he was bonded with Dormammu now. Cloak or no cloak, they were connected. And then in Vengeance of the Moon Knight, Hood teamed up with Norman Osborn and a guy named Profile to resurrect Raoul Bushman with Hood's demon powers in an attempt to take down Moon Knight. And in Dark Reign Mr. Negative, Hood pulled together a team to go to Chinatown to attack Mr. Negative, but were defeated by Spider-Man and withdrew when they learned that Mr. Negative had an agreement with Norman Osborn. In Siege the Cabal, Hood was waiting with Norman Osborn at Avengers Tower, but when Doctor Doom and Iron Patriot started fighting, Hood teleported away. Then the Hood made a deal with Nightmare for more power on Earth, and he used this to attack Damon Hellstrom, who was possessed by Doctor Voodoo, and when Hood shot him, Voodoo became loyal to Nightmare, and it was a good partnership until Nightmare was defeated once more. In Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man 626, Spider-Man was following Michelle Gonzalez's boyfriend when he went to a crime meeting on a construction site run by the Kingpin, Hood. The Hood wanted new recruits to fight for the honor of wearing Mac Gargan's old battle suit to become the new Scorpion and join his Hood army, which was when Spidey ran into Scorpion from S.H.I.E.L.D. In the subsequent battle, Scorpion ended up calling Hood Bedsheet before stealing the Scorpion suit from him. Hood then was at a Cabal meeting and simply watched as Osborn had the Sentry, now called Void, attack Doctor Doom. After intense fighting, Hood ordered them to go with him to Asgard to fight by Osborn's side. And this was at a time when Asgard was floating just above Midgard on Earth, just over a town called Broxton, Oklahoma. 
He teleported a lot of villains there for that battle, and in that war, Hood battled with Tyr and then fired a magic bullet at Baldur the Brave, although that was easily deflected by the Asgardian. And he fought there using his enchanted guns on his foes. After Sentry turned into Void again, Loki took the power of the Nornstones back from the Hood and gave it to the hero faction, so Hood and Madame Mask ended up leaving the battlefield in a jeep. And they headed to Los Angeles and linked up with Madame Mask's father, who was another villain named Count Nefaria. And Count Nefaria was going to give Hood powers, but the Avengers attacked before the procedure could be completed. And the Avengers, Tiger included, brought them all back to Broxton, Oklahoma, and into the custody of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Maria Hill, where he was then transported to a place called Superhuman Holding Facility Theta, but would later be transported to Rikers. And while at Rikers, Parker made friends with an Inhuman who told him that there was an Infinity Stone that Black Bolt had hidden in the Himalayas in a spot where Adelan used to be. And so Hood bribed a guard, got out of prison, and headed right for the Himalayas. And when they found Adelan's old site, Hood killed his guides with a Hydra Ion Laser Mace and then found his way inside where he acquired the Reality Gem. And Hood transported to the Fantastic Four, defeated Reed and Ben, and then got the Power Gem, and he used the Power Gem to beat the crap out of Red Hulk. Hood then went to Madame Mask and used his Infinity Gems to remove the scars from Madame Mask's face. Hood then went to Area 51 to get the Space Gem, which is when he confronted and easily defeated the Avengers. He showed up again on a beach to fight both Red Hulk and Thor, who'd retrieved the Time Gem from Namor for safekeeping. He was also able to get the Mind Gem, defeating a mental attack from Professor Xavier, and then found his way to the Astral Plane to get the Soul Gem, which is when he ran into Thanos, although this Thanos was Doctor Strange disguised. When that ruse was up, they were both ejected from the Astral Plane, and Robbins was forced to fight the Avengers more, where Red Hulk chased Hood through different realities as he was using the Reality Gem. But back on Earth, Iron Man had gathered up the gems and banished Hood back to prison. During Original Sins, after the Watcher was killed and his secret spilled out into the minds of people on Earth, Hood got a call from John King who was high on drugs and hanging out at a trap house ranting about exterminatrix. So Parker went there to rescue his cousin, but when S.H.I.E.L.D. arrived, Parker made them all invisible, even using a ventilator to control his breathing, and somehow that made the spell last longer. Hood was able to gather up S.H.I.E.L.D. equipment and brought it to the basement. Marvel Boy, Prodigy, and Hulkling found him, still hooked up to the ventilator. He took Prodigy as a hostage and wanted him to help him build a Cerebro machine which would let him see what secrets lay in the minds of King and King's other addict friends. But Hood downloaded the data to an encrypted program, so the heroes attacked him, which is when Hood once more let his demon out. Hood teleported away, but not before Prodigy altered the data, so Hood couldn't access it either. Hood then made a new team, recruiting Mad Thinker, Black Ant, Thunderball, and Enchantress, and called this new team Illuminati, and also recruited criminals to rob a shop where Titania was working in an attempt to recruit her as well. They fought with Iron Fist and Luke Cage before Hood teleported Titania back to his lair, and after some reluctance, she joined Hood's Illuminati. Hood and his team then went to Club Fenris to see the Fenris twins because they needed the artificial Bifrost that a Dr. Carver had made, but Black Ant killed Dr. Carver, and so the Illuminati and the villains at Club Fenris all fought. The Fenris twins then put out a $2 million bounty on Hood and his group, and Hood almost killed Black Ant for causing this mess, but chose not to. Struggling to keep control, he opened up to Titania about his daughter and his embracing of his villain destiny. And later that night, they assaulted a Roxxon lab, which is when Jane Foster as Thor attacked. And Hood lied to Jane Foster, saying his Illuminati was a new Defenders team. And they managed to hold Jane and the Roxxon troops off long enough to activate Carver's Rainbow Bridge, and Hood and the Illuminati used it to go to Asgardia, where they found a weapons cache. The Mad Thinker knocked Hood out, stole some weapons, and escaped, then detonated Black Ant, whom he'd made into a human bomb. So Hood, Titania, Enchantress, and Thunderbolt were stunned but recovered, although when they recovered, they were surrounded by Asgardians. Hood had Titania punch him now that he was at full strength, and they used Hood's spilled blood to summon Hellhounds, which is when they teleported to Hell. When Titania threatened to leave him, Hood said he knew where her husband was in a shield prison town called Pleasant Hill and how to break him out. So they teleported to Pleasant Hill and broke Absorbing Man and Whirlwind out. With them now with the Illuminati, Hood declared he wanted to go after Mad Thinker. But before that, he visited Sarah and Bree. He wanted them to come with him, but they refused. So Hood went back to his base in Hell and declared he wanted to kill the families of all his enemies. And with that, his team rebelled, so he sent them all back to New York. And after learning that she'd been set up, Titania attacked Hood, ripping his hood in half, which again released his demon energy and leaving him a mere mortal. So a depowered Hood met up with Fool Killer, which is when he wound up squatting in an abandoned mansion and in a back and forth with two different fool killers. Later, Hood told Fool Killer he wanted to run the city, but Fool Killer refused to be a part of that, so Hood told him he'd send the Punisher to kill Fool Killer. In 2017's Daredevil issue 15, Hood was back at a bar, but this time it was the bar with no name, and he was still there a few months later in Black Panther World of Wakanda. 
In 2017's Defenders, Hood managed to get the Norn Stones back in his possession. And Hood, along with Living Laser and Corruptor, found the Doctor Doom version of Iron Man hiding in France, and they all fought with Doom countering Hood's magic. So Hood and his army went to Latveria and attacked and defeated Doctor Doom, and then did all they could to break into Doom's armor and demanded to know the location of Doom's gold reserves. Doom managed to teleport away just as they breached his armor, and assuming Doom and Iron Man were working together, Hood then went after Stark Industries. And they went after the CEO of Stark Industries, a guy named Eric Lynch, on his boat. And as they forced him to sign the company over to Hood, a swarm of Doom bots and Iron Man drones washed over the boat. And after Hood was hit by a drone, Mephisto took over his body, but Hood was defeated anyway. Hood then made a deal with Mephisto for more power. And then in Daredevil 608, Hood recruited a version of Matt Murdock that Reader from the Avengers had created. He also started using his money to start honest businesses, something to help legitimize him as well as a way to launder his own money. He still had his criminal enterprises though and during one meeting, complete with some low main, Hawkeye attacked, which is when Hood was arrested, though he was quickly released. Ronan then continued attacking Hood's operations and at one point he had enough, so he called in people like Shocker, Fancy Dan, Tombstone, Rhino, Taskmaster, and Armadillo and offered them $3 million to take out Hawkeye. But Hawkeye showed up, stole the money, and used it to buy a demon from Count Nefaria since Nefaria was mad at Hood for breaking up with his daughter Madame Mask. Hawkeye then beat up Hood, then let the demon steal Hood's powers, and at that point he was done, and Hawkeye left him for the police to find. And recently, still presumably depowered, Hood was seen in Las Vegas at the Criminal Technology Show, a convention and auction aimed at supervillains. And he's still out there, plotting and planning, cloaked and hooded, ready to strike again. But until he does, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.